I can't see that from my end. Yes. Okay, so this is David Hicks, and this is his work, and he's going to speak about his process and his content. Thank you so much for doing this, David. Sure, sure. Yeah, thank, thank you so much for having me, and thank you guys for being here. I wish I could be there in person, but uh, I'm still very excited to do this. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen because I'm going to be talking about a lot of the artworks here. And um, let's just see if this works. Okay. So can you guys all see that? Yes. Okay. So um, what I want to talk about is um, basically uh, I want to talk a little bit about the... Um, how I started making this kind of work, the multi-figure narrative, and then a little bit about my process. Um, you guys see them in the final stage and that's exciting. I mean, I love seeing them there too, but there's a lot that goes into these. And so I, um, this is a, a great opportunity for me to talk about that. Um, but I wanna just give you some background on how did I start making uh, the work that I'm making uh when i was an undergraduate student my education was very uh traditional we were allowed to do about four things it was uh draw the still life draw or paint the still life um we did landscapes but most of the time it was pretty cold so um we did interiors it's kind of like a landscape uh replacement so these big perspective scenes figure drawing which i did a lot of and then self-portraits, which I did a lot, a lot of. And at the time, I don't know what you guys are going to think about this. But at this time, we weren't allowed to use photos. And I didn't even, I didn't have access to a camera anyway. Uh, so I would buy this like giant mirror and we would put the mirror all around my room and just do self-portrait after self-portrait. Um Looking back on my education, I, I loved it. I mean, I learned to draw from life and my skill level really, really improved. But kind of by the end, I realized, um, you know, I, I could only really draw or paint what was in front of me. Um, so as I, and I'm, I'm skipping through a lot of time, um, as I went to, uh, went on to graduate school, um, I ended up, Sorry, did somebody say something? Okay, I'm just going to keep going, but stop me if you guys, if you can't hear me or anything. Um, in graduate school, one of my goals was to get more imaginative with my figurative work. Um, and out of grad school uh, came this painting. I, I went to Italy about midway through was very inspired by uh, the multi-figure compositions that I saw over there and came back. And this was the first, um, so first drawing, I'm sorry, painting that I really kind of came up with from my imagination um, and, and started to put together, you know, a big multi-figure kind of wild scene and even, you know, started to deal with some of the symbols like the dead bird or the gun um or you know something moving down versus something flying up um this was the first painting that i really started to do that in um and it, and it was i did it all from imagination so it's kind of blobby and unfinished um but i still think it was a real breakthrough work for me um after graduate school i started using photographic references a whole lot more and so um the the paintings got sharper, uh, the detail level got sharper. And, but in a way I kind of went back to self portraits uh, and yet I still felt bold enough to kind of put all these characters in around me. And so it was somewhat of a um, surreal scene. Um, one of the other things I noticed in this painting that I, you know, I, I started noticing that I was doing that is still carrying on to my work today is this use of kind of opposite symbols that really carry across or up and down or, you know, diagonally across a work of art. So this is called self-portrait with family. This is me here. And this is my mother with a tennis racket, very round feminine shape versus uh, my grandpa over here with shotgun, very pointy masculine shape. 
Um, and I didn't plan this. I just remember stepping back one uh, one day when working on this in the studio and just seeing like, wow, this really, these two symbols kind of hold both sides and there's this tension. And so I started seeing it everywhere, like less formal meat versus more formal meat or something flying versus somebody laying down. And it was something that just kind of, um, it kept coming up and it still comes up in my work today. But I kept doing these these self portraits with multiple figures uh, as kind of a, a metaphorical narrative that I was weaving together. And after several of these, I felt like I felt like I had really got to a place where I was comfortable um, in you know I, I was able to work from photo references or, or use my observational skills to kind of get that level of detail that I wanted, but also just kind of plop these figures down onto the space of the page and really weave them together, uh, both visually, I mean, I'm using like gun bullets here or, or text. So weave everything together visually and then also kind of uh, bring the narrative together um, in a way that, that worked and really held the viewer. Uh, and so this, this brings us a little bit more to what's actually in the show um, I kept working with these like metaphorical narratives um, and but it started to get to where I didn't have to be this the main characters. I was just one of the other characters or sometimes I would take myself out completely. Um, this one's this one's called Bad Cycle. And so I've got these three characters over here. This is me in the middle and I'm chewing on a rat. Uh, and there's these uh, these characters who are turning this skull of death and you've got the ominous bird cycle <laughs> and so from these three characters and the fire is smoldering down here come these three characters and they're like a negative opposite or like a bad dream version of what's happening here and really the whole idea behind it is um anxiety how like anxiety is not going to produce anything good uh, but I started to get more comfortable working in kind of a metaphorical way and making the stories a little bit more fantastical. <laughs> um, this drawing is called Cycle, and it's it still is one of my favorite uh, pieces that I've done. I'm really happy with how this came together. Um, and it's, it's very much about uh, a generational cycle and... Um, so children growing up and being raised by parents and parents raising children and kind of a lot of the exchanges that happen in that process and some of them being positive, some of them not so positive. So I put uh, there's three male characters over here on the left and three female characters over here on the right. Uh, and then the kids are kind of stuck in the middle, which is really that's uh, a metaphor for kids are always kind of like in the middle of everything. Um, and, you know, there's some like there's chains coming down on this side from somebody higher up in the family, passing it down through the kids to somebody it looks like, you know, that the uh, kids are standing on. But over here, you've got the breast milk, which is more of a nourishing symbol. Um, so trying to balance there's some positive things. Uh, I'm sorry, some positive things and maybe some not so positive things. Um, and the same with the characters is I think some characters I tried to put them in a more positive light. Like this guy's trying to swim upstream, uh, but he looks like he's like blowing smoke or kind of attacking this female figure. She's a little bit more positive, but she's also blowing smoke up at the birds. I try not to be um, too over the top with it, but um, I like to kind of put figures together, symbols together to where I, I do enjoy it when, when the audience comes up and can read the story and can get the general drift of kind of where I was going with the narrative. Um, just, just a quick side note here. Uh, those chains took like three times longer to do than the entire figure. So <laughs> I don't know if we have any drawing painting people in here, but if you guys are thinking about drawing chains, just think about that a little bit. Uh, no, I, I'm really happy with how it turned out, but it, it took a long time. Just a little process detail there. Um, 
it, the, these weren't the same time, but they had a similar idea of the cycle as kind of a concept. And this one cycle of experience, um, you know, the same idea as this, this cycle. But I think in cycle of experience, the um, one of the things that, or to me, that's that's different by the time I got to making this one is that every single character or cluster of characters is uh, kind of a metaphorical point or state on on this journey that is cyclical. So um, I'll give you some examples. So these two figures down here, they're on the bottom, they're looking out or looking up, kind of despondent. And, and from them, you've got this figure who rises up between them, who's hopeful, looking upward and reaching for something. So there's this cluster of figures. And then the answer for this is over here, you've got the two women who are more on the top, the upper half. They've got this arc of birds. They're beautiful, pregnant in this case. And then from, from this point, you've got the guy almost being birthed or being born, kind of moving down and also reaching for something down here. So you got two people, one of them's reaching up, or the third one's reach, reaching up, and then these two people, he's kind of moving down. Um, the same type of thing is happening. The, the the dead figure or the sleeping figure on the bottom, more emaciated, uh, much thinner, and kind of the answer for him is this overfull figure up on the top. Um, and then this woman and this guy, both kind of materially dressed uh, and holding out something that is kind of nothing it's like it's a plastic bag with leaves or you know a cigarette um and then you've got this this uh boy in the middle who's sort of balancing or taking it all in so you know I, at this point i had gotten to a place where like i just enjoyed drawing the figures um and and putting in these kind of metaphorical narratives that were um you know that that people could read into but a lot of what drives the drawing are these sort of opposite symbols or I shouldn't say opposite symbols, but kind of talking to each other on either side uh, of the piece. And that's really, you know, in this big one, it's, it's in the same vein as that, uh, but it's just taken to a much, um, much higher level. I mean, I've got almost 30 figures on here. This is the most ambitious thing I've ever done, but you can look almost anywhere. You've got this guy reaching out, hand on his head, hand on his head, reaching out. Uh, this character standing on somebody's head, but then kind of the opposite answer is she's lifting him up uh, on this side. You've got woman who's cradling like a young boy and then another woman who's cradling uh, a young girl. And, you know, just I could go on and on and I don't want to talk about all these, but uh, it really becomes as I work on these longer ones, um, I, I, I'm realizing that uh, symmetry and, and having these symbols uh, talk to each other across the composition is really important. Last thing I do want to say about this, because there's a lot I could say, but I'm, I'm trying to keep my time down, um, is that, you know, I talk about the symbols and how they're kind of speaking to each other across the composition. And that is important, but the little vignettes, like, like the figures. So like she's stealing the stealing some chips from him or like this guy is getting stepped on and, you know, she's sort of hovering over the figure. Um, I, I purposefully will choose these. Um, I'll try to put figures together in a way that to where there is a, you know, there's a possible narrative to be read. Uh, and I like it when my viewers, you know, come up to me and they're like, oh, I think that this is about this. Or here's the story between like, she's holding up this guy and he's giving birth to the woman and the son. And and I, I try to put them in that way to where they're really ripe with meaning. But I also try not to close it down so that people could read a lot of different things into them. Um, and here's just a, a close up shot. Um, so a little bit about process. Um, this is a page from my sketchbook. Uh, and, and what inspires me is, is people obviously. Um, but I will see, you know, I'll, I'll be somewhere and I'll see like a certain person dressed in a certain way or a combination of figures and, um, 
I will just try to scroll down like just the quickest of sketches just to get the idea in my sketchbook. And as you can see here with like a lot of notes to help me remember the moment and, and what it is that I was seeing. If I can, I'll take a picture. But a lot of times I just have to use my memory and kind of draw out, um, you know, try to help me to remember what I'm seeing. And so and they're really they're the crudest of sketches. Uh, but it's important. So like, like in the bottom here, I saw there was a, a woman who was fixing a younger daughter's hair from behind something about that combination. I'm like, I've got to get this in a multi-figure, uh, composition someday. So I just make the crudest of sketches and make a note for myself. And, and these build up over a period of time. I just keep collecting these moments, um, until eventually I end up uh, you know, I, I come up with an idea or a sketch where I'm combining a lot of these moments. And so this is cycle of experience. I was um, talking about that earlier, but this is the sketch for it. And so this kind of shows you, you know, if you could see there's a guy floating up top and I do have a guy floating up top, there's someone on the bottom, someone on the bottom, there's this person in the middle with their arms out. Um, and then I was going to have a guy smoking here and there's a woman reaching up and those end up in the final piece. But if you could see from the sketch, it's very, very vague in a way. It's like, I kind of know where I want figures, but usually in the sketch, there's a whole lot more figures and everything's just kind of, it's very sketchy. Um, and so there's a lot of adjustment that happens from this stage to this stage. And I'm going to talk about that now. So here's how. Uh, it works. You know, the reality of making one of these things is if I if I'm ready to start on it, I'll stretch the paper. I will have the model come in and sit for me. Um, I will, you know, work as much as I can, take the photos and then finish the drawing of one figure and then slowly add another one and another one. You can see. So like these two are, are more finished. And then this one is still in process. It just really, uh, got put in there. It really is kind of a one thing at a time, especially if like the figures are overlapped, they're going to be touching. I kind of have to know exactly where one is before I place the other one. Um, and so these are different. This is a different stage or different point in the drawing, as you can see. So I kind of have this combination melded together, but then, you know, I'm trying to get this guy, make it feel like he's touching her shoulder. So they take a long time, uh, and for a very long time, they can look really unfinished uh, and, and kind of unsatisfying in that way. Um, but I found if I, you know, if I just keep being patient in the process and keep adding figures, um, I can bring things together in the end to a final state. Um, Okay, la I think the last thing I want to talk about very briefly are the sculptures, the little miniature sculptures. Um, a, a while back, this was several years ago, I wanted to work uh, digitally, and I tried a lot of different things, but digital sculpting was kind of the only thing to me that, that felt somewhat satisfying. It felt like drawing. Uh, so I started doing these sculptures from, from my models, from, from photos of the models, I, I began using a program called Sculptress, um, and then I ended up moving to ZBrush, which is a lot more complex and took a lot of time to learn that process. But it gave me more options, both you know, in terms of what I could sculpt, and I started to learn about um, digital fabrication, how I could three D print these um, these digital things I've been working on, and it became like a physical work of art. Um, and, you know, it, if I had access to one, so this is a, the digital file that I, um, uh, I had access to a CNC machine. So this is a block of wood and it carved, I carved these out. And, um, and, um, so it was nice, the digital fabrication aspect. I think that was nice because it kind of gave me, gave me options and I liked how you know, I think that they're nice complements to the uh, the big multi-figure pieces in that, like, they're kind of character sketches. I feel like these could be characters in my multi-figure pieces. They weren't necessarily supposed to be specific ones, but uh, 
But anyway, I, I haven't done this for a while, but I still enjoy, I think, how they're compliments to the big ones. I think I am, I am done at this point. I'm going to stop my screen share. Um, you know, really, it's 1223. I just want to open it up for, for questions from anybody. I uh, want to leave some time for that. Any questions, guys? Comments? Uh, there's a drawing in the back, and, and it's based on the four horsemen of the apocalypse. How'd you come up with that? Right. So um, that that was, I was very inspired by the four horsemen, by Durer's four horsemen, but believe it or not, that drawing was actually supposed to be a detail in a much larger composition. Uh, it was going to be a big war scene with like a lot going on. And I did that drawing initially as, as a study and it just, as it got going, it just got really huge. And, you know, I finished like the four horsemen part. And then I decided, well, I'll just keep this as a detail piece. Um, I never actually ended up finishing the big war drawing that I had planned, but um, I still, that's still one of my favorite ones that I've, I've done here. Um, Durr, I look at Durr a lot. He's, he's beautiful. So um, it's really, it's kind of more of a, a, a nod to Durr at this stage. Is that kind of what you wanted to know? Yeah. When you work on these, do you work on, on the wall or on the toilets? Work on a what or what? Say that again. When you're working on the big drawings, are they you working on the wall or are you working with a flat? The I'm working on I'm working on a board. Um and the yeah, and yeah, so I, I have a large board and there's a big roll of paper I'll roll out on the board. And I actually have developed this over time because like tape, it would always rip my drawings. But there's actually, I, ha I have like smaller, thinner boards with uh, weather stripping that I use and I kind of clamp down. So it presses the drawing down on either side, keeps it nice and tight. Um, and then when I take it off, it's, you know, the drawing's not damaged by the tape. Uh, but the really, the really big one that that's like the biggest that I can go. I mean, I could barely fit that board in my truck. <laughs> you spray them when they're done or no? Um, no, the the uh, especially the ones that are framed, no, uh, because you know I usually rely on the framing to take care of that. I would like to spray them or somehow seal them. Um, but I, I, I'm wary of spray fix. I think sometimes it does good things and then sometimes it'll kind of darken a drawing or change it somehow. And I just really don't want that. Yeah, it does change it. Right. Questions, questions from anybody who is um, online? Comments? I'm not sure, can you hear me, David? Yeah, I can hear you. I was just wondering, you know, I, I see the influence of a lot of kind of Renaissance artists and especially with the way that you pose the figures and create the compositions. I was just wondering, aside from Durer, who are some of the people that you look at and if there are any other contemporary artists that you, you admire? Sure. Um, yeah. So as far as like artists of the past, um, I definitely I look at Michelangelo a lot. Um, I've tried to copy several times his uh, Last Judgment painting. Um, you know, some of those just big epic ones are are still captivating to me. Um, as an undergraduate, I, I, I one thing I didn't say about my undergraduate education is we had to copy master painting. And I copied like pretty much every Caravaggio you can think of. I wow. did like a fully finished I mean, we're talking like it was like almost an exact copy. And that was part of the education. At the time, I had no idea. I'm just like, well, I guess I got to do this. And I enjoyed it. But now I look at my work and I can see how much I picked up from Caravaggio, just some of the drama and the crazy moments mm -hmm. um, from copying him. Yeah. Uh, so he's still a big influence. Um, gosh, contemporary artists. Uh, so Z Lin, he, he's um, he's teaches in Seattle. 
he's a Chinese artist. Um, he, he also does like some multi-figure, like five capital executions in China, mm. uh, five capital punishments. Um, there's uh, Hugo Crossthwaite. I think he's getting kind of old now, but he's an uh, artist from Tijuana, uh, mixed media. You know, really, he's way more bold than me, but I just I love his work. And then uh, Ilya Morochnik, he's a Russian artist. Um, he's more of a painter, but I, I've i just been also enthralled by uh, Russian academic drawing for yeah. the last decade or more. Um, I love how they draw. Mm -hmm. um uh werner tubke he's another sorry I should, uh, werner tubke he did uh history painting so it's like a peasant's war panorama humongous like panoramic painting uh not a very well-known guy but his his work he was contemporary in a way he was like around like the berlin wall era but his work kind of looks like Bach. Mm -hmm. uh I'm just amazed that I mean he has like thousands of figures. I'm amazed at how much how he could organize that. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Thanks. Well, thank you. I appreciate. It. Yeah, it's nice when people can see that, and uh, so I appreciate I think the comment. It's kind of cool. I mean, it's a you know it's a contemporary approach, but I can see these these influences from the past. And I think there's there's a lot of room for that in contemporary art, the use of the figure with the kinds of influences that you've talked about. Yeah, and that really is, I mean, it's kind of my story in a nutshell is uh, I've, I've been very, ins I mean, I was, as a student, really inspired by um, art history and multi-figure paintings. And, and like, I love this language and I wanted to express with the language, but some of the things that I said, yeah, I wanted to, to talk more about contemporary uh, kind of stuff and use contemporary figures and things that people can relate with. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, one student is working on a, uh, a 14 foot mural right now. We have six doing it, but one student is here. And it, yeah, it's a, uh, she's working, you're working flat, right, on the floor. Yeah, most of them are, but I saw them are working, painting on the floor because 14 feet, where are you gonna put it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's uh, yeah. That was another part. Is like we were work. We worked big when I was an undergrad. It was part of the curriculum. I love working big, but yeah, I mean, now being in this for like a longer period of time, there is that concern. Like, what are you going to do with this? And I do yeah. have some. I have huge drawings uh, that I didn't show in this, and they're not in the show that are rolled up. Uh, I mean, I'm talking the biggest one I ever did was 16 feet. It's a giant pastel drawing and it's it's in a roll. I mean, it's protected, but I like them when they're framed better. So I feel better about them. They're preserved a little nicer. Uh, but yeah, we're, I think it's I still think it's a wonderful experience to work big. So that's exciting. Um, anybody else questions, comments? Thank you so much. That was really informative. You work yeah. Beautiful. yeah, when you come by and pick yourself up, you can see the comments that people have written in the book, which is really nice. Yeah. 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 I would love to. Yeah. Okay. Um, great. Thank you so much. Thanks, David. Right. Thank you so much for having me. You guys have a great day. You too. All right.